grab this one good sell. I'm ready to go to bed for the whole weekend now. No church knows, but I have completed and posted on Academia, and I'll make sure the link is in the description below. And it's free, it's not clickbait where you're forced to buy something. Tricked. The complete works of Joseph Smith. First draft. It is unclear as to how long I'm going to be allowed to live, as there's a full-on attack to have me murdered. Yet again, the fifth time. Same pattern of practice. There's a big cover-up of what I have exposed from the Joseph Smith papers. Which first it got exposed because I deciphered Paleo Hebrew and then the learning of the Egyptians and the language of the Egyptians and then learned how the Bible was written from the Egyptian documents and yeah, and then Joseph Smith papers. As I, in 2017, began church history research, simply because what I was investigating with the Carthage murder, Carthage jail murder, required that I go back to the beginning. And so, this will not contain forged documents. I made every effort to keep those out. I, like I said, it's the first draft. And uh, it's unclear as to how long I'll be allowed to live if I'll be able to work on it. I intended to do this work in Zion, like Nephi. Unfortunately, the church has forced me to be more like Ether and Moroni, to live out of my cave and work on it, as Mormons are about to be utterly destroyed because they refuse to give heed to the warnings. They are still under condemnation concerning the Book of Mormon. And as a result, I have to suffer. As YouTube has kept the majority of you away from my channels all these years with their attacks, aside from the attacks that are number five now. But YouTube has been attacking this whole time and they've decided to escalate this year because this year is the final year. They failed in 2020 to accomplish their final solution. And so it's been made very clear to the world that they will do it this year. And there are people who want to live in denial that no, they wouldn't go that far. They've learned their lesson. They would never retaliate. At halftime today, I literally, uh, literally had to stop and take a break. I'm able to identify the forged documents, but going over the forged documents to identify them as forged documents caused me great fear and trembling at how evil the secret combination was in Nauvoo. And there is Joseph Smith's actual documents 
talking about the secret combination in Nauvoo. And there's some other fun stuff too. Because of my specialty, I provide them for you. I don't give explanations, no translations. This is just Joseph's. I've been doing the YouTube videos for that stuff. But yeah, there's there's pictures in there. <laughs> and so I, I made every effort to only put Joseph Smith's documents in there. There are some exceptions. And those exceptions I hope are going to be obvious. Uh, one example, uh, Emma Smith's letters to and from. Kind of important because there's a lot of accusations about what she knew. And so I put in those letters to dispel the myths. And so the manner in which I was able to identify the forged documents was first and foremost the name of the church. It is very clear going through every single year. Yeah, I've had a lot of time to work on this. Thanks to YouTube. <coughs> Banning me from viewing YouTube. And anybody who goes through it, you know, like the people who assembled it together and put it online and published it into books, can know that Joseph Smith did not name his church the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That is one established fact. And even after the so-called claim of change, Joseph Smith's actual documents kept using the original name last had before the change. And I've been going over this with you in the videos. And my little reference book is all boxed up now along with the threat to destroy America in the future. As yeah, that's a big part of the evil that I witnessed from the forged documents. Also another thing that is important to know when you're doing linguistic investigation for authenticity is not just uh, signatures, because the ones with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints on licenses for missionary work yeah, forgeries are easily identified when the wrong name is used. Whereas when Joseph does it, it's the right name of the church. But also, Joseph Smith never used in the name of Jesus Christ. Never. So those little tells are the main keys for identifying Joseph's authentic documents. And so some interesting things that I had noticed as I took notes. Joseph Smith did not found Nauvoo. This is part of the Danite plot. They started their secret headquarters in Adam on Diamon and used that to have their election fraud that resulted in cooing Joseph Smith's church and getting him framed and locked up in Liberty Jail. And thus all the changes in 1838 that were not legitimate. And so it, from the documents, Joseph Smith arrives in Nauvoo in 19, or 1842-ish. 
because there's a big change that takes place. And yes, it has to do with the name. Very obvious, very blatant, that when Joseph is gone, they run amok. When Joseph is there, zip, nothing to see. Uh, 25th of March, 1843, Joseph Smith gives a proclamation calling for help to expose the secret combination in Nauvoo. Uh, on the 6th of April, 1843's conference, they use the name with Jesus in it and then explain that Joseph Smith is having matters in court so he won't be attending. <laughs> Could they not be more obvious? <sighs> and so in his absence on that conference, they then announce that the Twelve will now be collecting money for the temple. The Book of the Law that Nelson had rushed to get published in the Joseph Smith papers last year. <laughs> it was right before Thanksgiving that I did my uh, big series video on. It should still be on the homepage. But dear God. And so, yes, this is when things uh, started escalating as uh, they were setting it all up to coup Joseph Smith again and get rid of him again. Um, Yeah, when uh, Joseph Smith also is there, Brigham Young is no longer called the president. <laughs> it's just, dear God, if you want to keep something a secret, don't leave documents behind. That's rule number one of secret combination societies. Dear God. Uh, interestingly, the people that worked on this project did not recognize that Section 131 was there. <laughs> and most of them, and probably all that they knew of, they would put in brackets the current section from the Doctrine and Covenants with the matching uh, uh, scripture that Joseph gave. But section 131, when I came across it, they didn't have it bracketed section 131, which is weird. Why not? Well, partly because this was put in by Brigham Young the year before he died. And so, yes, there's a whole bunch of documents that we don't have in our canon. That is kind of important to understand. There's more stuff from Joseph that was rejected by Brigham Young. And Section 131, Brigham Young gutted the part where Benjamin Franklin Johnson was being talked to by Joseph Smith with his Joseph, with Benjamin Franklin Johnson's wife, one wife, and yet it's gone. Can you think of why Joseph talking to Benjamin Franklin Johnson and his one wife telling them that they're going to be exalted in the celestial kingdom for their marriage sealing on earth? would be gutted by Brigham Young. 
Yeah, this is another tell of forged documents. That whole long list on that little reference booklet that I had of all the changes Joseph supposedly made, but then never followed after he got out of Liberty Jail. And so, yeah, it was gutted because it didn't support the polygamy agenda, which again, Brigham Young had a forged document. I did find that document, finally. There was a document claiming to be from uh, July 1843, uh, whatever the Doctrine and Covenant says, and it was in the Joseph Smith papers for that year. But if you look at the document, somebody had to write in, and it's newer ink, and it takes 40 years for ink to fade. So 40 years after the original document claiming to be, which corresponds with section 132 was written, it says by Joseph Smith. <laughs> right. Because the linguistic pattern of section 132 is confirmed as Brigham's. Um, and so after this, on the 11th of June, 1843, this is the first instance where I see that the Danites in Nauvoo are now talking about a temple endowment along with washings and anointings. And if you're unclear of what Joseph Smith had versus what Brigham Young added, pretty much everything in the endowment ceremony in the temple is Brigham's. Only the washing and anointings was Joseph's, but there's been some changes to it. But nonetheless, and also on this date, they, the Danites gave out licenses to selected people to be authorized to go out and break kneecaps of those who don't pay up to build the temple in that book of the law. That secret combination economy that they were doing. Because this was never Joseph's procedure. Uh, 12th of July, 1843. Now we're starting to get the claims of polygamy. That's when the section in the Doctrine and Covenants is. And so you can see that that uh, first uh, they're setting it up to have people pay to go to the temple, to build the temple. Then they've got polygamy in the works. Uh, 13th of August, uh, we're seeing uh, Sidney Rigdon getting framed as being the Judas who betrays Joseph Smith. This was not the case. But they're trying to make it so that they remove certain people from key positions to weaken Joseph Smith's position. On the 25th of November, 1843, they're now talking about infiltrating Washington, D.C. to have a church foothold in D.C. and thus expand and take it over with the population. Similar to why Brigham Young wanted polygamy and called the saints from that were too poor to come to the valley so that he can have amass an army against the United States that took away his kingdom the very next year. And so this infiltration of this secret combination is, 
exposed in the Joseph Smith papers. And uh, also, one final thing that I noted. On the 27th of December, 1843, the Danites gave their motto, again identified by the name of the church, the motto for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We will be at peace with all men so long as they will let us alone. If you're a criminal organization, you're causing the first blow, drawing first blood, stealing from people, causing other people harm, trying to take away agency, putting them into bondage, etc., etc. And so this is similar to uh, Islam wanting peace with Israel. Yeah, we want peace with Israel when they're dead and exterminated, gone from the land. Sure. It's that same bullying terrorist motto. So, there you have it. Um, now do a Rip Van Winkle, I guess.